Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargaming.com. Welcome, Wargamers, to the Expendables Warhammer 40k Narrative Campaign Season 2. If you guys haven't seen the first one, check out the first one. But I wanted to give you a little bit of backstory as to what this is before you dive right in and get invested in it. First off, this isn't your typical way of playing Warhammer 40k. It is a custom way, a way in which I have tailored for myself and for Rob. Rob is the player throughout this campaign. I am the games master. I've crafted the missions that he plays, and you, you the viewers, you the participants, and the members of the community have helped me craft these rules specific to these characters that Rob is using in this campaign. Now, if you don't remember this, this was a few months back when I posted some of these things on social media, and they were miniatures from Hardcore Minis, Hardcore Miniatures, they're the ones sponsoring this campaign, and they sent these minis over, they had them painted up, fantastic there's links in the description below for their company and the artist who worked on them and uh, I said to you guys what rules do you think we should give these guys what rules would the rock have if he was a miniature in the 40k universe what rules would John Wick have or Keanu Reeves have if he was a character and so forth so this is what I have compiled this is what I've done and this is the fruits of your and mine our our labor so stay tuned for that. Now, if you want to watch the entire campaign, you can for free because this campaign will be in the mini wargaming vault in addition to the episodes that are released to, on YouTube. But if you want to watch the entire thing for free, sign up for a seven day free trial to the vault and visit miniwargaming.com slash action. If you want to sign up for the entire campaign, even if you cancel right after, you'll still have access to the entirety of Season 2 of The Expendables. But not only Season 2, you'll be able to watch Season 1, which I made a year ago with Steve and all of those missions that we went through with all the original cast of the characters that he was fielding at the time with Schwarzenegger, with Sly, with Mr. T, with Chuck Norris. You'll see all of that as well. It's all included if you go to that link, miniwargaming.com slash action. Also, a link has been provided in the video description below for you to see that. There's a lot of action in this campaign. It is complete, wacky, fun. Everything blows up. There are action movie tropes all over the place. Rob dressing up in costume every single mission because he was so immersed every single time, and it was amazing. This is the way I think all miniature games should be played, not necessarily dressing up in costume every time, but just like this level of fun. Stay tuned for an action-packed ride of all of these adventures that are about to ensue right before you, starting with the mission number one, John Wick, and getting his cyber dog back. We play and call it work. Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargaming.com, here with Rob, Board Game Maniacs. Welcome, Wargamers, to Expendable Season 2. Season 2! This, uh, I waited so long to be in this, Dave, and I was going to play it the first time, but something happened, but now I'm here, yes. and as you can tell, I'm excited, I can't wait to do this. Yes, I love this, full immersion. And if you guys like action movies, in like old school, new school, whatever it is, then you're gonna love this campaign. Combine that with the love of 40K, and this is what the campaign is all about. So this mission is gonna be Keanu and rescuing his dog because he's John Wick, but who are you? Who are you playing today? I'm Rob Wick. Rob Wick? Yes. John Wick is my brother. Yes. My younger brother. Okay. And uh, I kind of understand about the dog thing because they took my cat. Let's dive right into the mission. First and foremost, we must have a huge thanks here to Hardcore Miniatures for providing these awesome models for this campaign. It's amazing. Uh, you have seen this already in the short promo intro video before this uh, episode started. So you've seen the rest of them that we'll be using in the campaign. But in this particular mission, we are using the uh, Keanu or the John Wick or the, uh, I don't actually know what they named it on Hardcore Miniatures. I don't think it's any of those, but uh, that's what we are using these models for. So. You can use them for whatever you want, obviously. And again, this is an entire custom campaign. I provided all of the rules for it in the link below uh, to the campaign booklet that can be downloaded on the Mini Wargaming website. First things first, Rob, we need to grab your character sheet 
and uh, write your weapon stats and your character stats and all of that stuff. Another huge thanks to all of the community members who have provided the rules for the characters in this campaign. If you have contributed to the rule pool, you're gonna see them possibly come up. And when, I, when you do, every single time I've used a rule, I've compiled it into a character sheet or a character upgrade sheet, uh, I've credited it as such. And so I will do my best to uh, remind everyone where the rules have come from. But if not, you can see it right here because I'll be referring to it many uh, a time during this campaign. Let's fill in his stats. Now, for those of you watching at home, you can follow along and maybe make your guess as to which you think is most appropriate for the stats that Keanu should have, knowing that we are drawing from his characters from his movies, whether it is Neo from the Matrix or John Wick or wherever else it may be from. So for his movement, he's gonna be six inches. So let's write a six there. For his weapon skill, we're gonna put a, what do you guys guess? What do you think it's gonna be? It's gonna be a four plus. Okay, so just write a four. And then his ballistic skill, we're gonna put a three there because you know, he's John Wick and he's like basically headshotting everyone. So that makes more sense. He's got the skill. His strength is gonna be a three, but his toughness will be a four because you know, he basically survives death all the time. His wounds will be a three and his attacks will be a three as well. We're gonna put seven for his leadership and his save will be a four plus. If you have guessed these stats along the way and you could guess them correctly, then congratulations. If not, maybe you were close. Just to show off a couple of the charts here. So I'm explaining this to Rob and you guys at home so you kind of learn at the same time. Whenever your character dies, they will immediately roll on the death chart and uh, suffer the penalties as such. So if your character dies, the mission is lost and then you roll on this chart to see what happens. There's a permanent effect that will stay with your character. If you roll a snake eyes, you are dead. Mm -hmm. So don't roll snake eyes. But there's other things like permanent minus one blister skill, for example, uh, you know, or you can get lucky. You can actually learn from your mistakes and if you roll higher. There's also an upgrade chart. So for every wound you inflict on an enemy, uh, that'll be one experience for you. And for every five levels, you get to upgrade something there. You'll roll randomly for your upgrade and it'll be good. Uh, you'll get better along the way. Most of the enemies you'll be facing have one wound each. Uh, some will have more if they're tougher and bosses will have more even still. Every level you upgrade, you will automatically be given a special ability that you can add to your character and you'll roll randomly to see which one is added to your character. And every upgrade happens instantaneously, even if it's mid-mission, so you get to use that new ability right then and there. For a level, put a one there, you start at level one. And command points, put a one there as well. Your command points are equal to your level. Over here, you have three stratagems you're able to use. We will go over these in detail should you choose to use them in the mission. This mission is unique in that it is just Keanu as a character. However, as the missions progress, you're going to develop a team of characters and you'll need to designate a warlord. And whoever your warlord is, their warlord trait is activated. In this case, he has a warlord trait because he's the only one on the table. There's two models here for John Wick. Which one do you choose to use, Rob? This will affect the war gear you're able to actually use in the mission. Two pistols or an auto gun? John Wick is better with two pistols, I think. In the movies he is, so yes, definitely two pistols. Two pistols it is. So he has a plasma pistol and a bolt pistol. Now his plasma pistol is a little bit special. Normally, when you roll a one, when it gets hot, you remove the model. In his case, he suffers a wound instead of being removed. And here we have a nice shot of the industrial complex where you are trying to rescue your nameless dog. Nameless? Well, have you seen John Wick 2? The dog doesn't have a name. It's, uh, the, it's the new dog. It's not the one that already died. Oh, I, oh okay. That, that's fine then. That's fine. But you, you know. You can like, name the dog. Well, what, do you, what would you name the dog? Onyx. 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 O N Y X. John Wick will start. He will deploy right here. And 
This is where he is in relation to everything else on the table. You will not know the stats of the models that you encounter until you attack them. Now, as much as these are Necromunda models, they're not actually Necromunda models. So don't think, if you play Necromunda, that you know the stats, you can refer to something. They will be custom according to this campaign because, because we can do it, because why not? And it's fun. And you know what? I just have to say this as well. Rob, you're not a player of the game, meaning you don't play 40K. No, I don't. Or Necromunda. Which is perfect because there's no reference in your brain. That's right. It's not like, hey, you're changing that, Dave, changing this. So everything is going to feel like it's new in what it is. I have one reference tattooed to my brain. Which is? Kill. It's very corn of you. Onyx is on the opposite side of this table, and your objective is to rescue him without him being killed. Should you do that, you win this mission. And you will get an additional D6 experience points. In addition to all of the experience that you will accrue throughout the mission by killing enemies. Now Rob, because John Wick is John Wick, you're gonna roll 2d6, and this will determine how many bolt pistol bullets you have. Two sixes. Okay, nine, you start with yeah. nine, that's not bad. Just make a little note of that. And the reason why that's important is because John Wick knows his clips and he knows how many bolts he has. Oh, yes. I'm You're writing, writing sideways. You actually, I'm writing sideways, That's yes. okay, I know what that means, and I think we all know what that means. P-E-W, pew pew. Pew pew, okay, sounds good. You got to fix it? Yes, yes, my... Oh, OCD is bugging you? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> P-E-W. Now, in this area, there are four crates that contain ammunition. Should you end your move within three inches of them, you can roll a D6 and add that many extra ballistic shots. Additionally, should John Wick kill enemy units, he may roll a dice. And on the roll of a four plus, he can scrounge and scavenge some bullets from enemy from fallen enemies. And if he does, it's D3 mount of bullets. However, this only applies to the gun that you're carrying. So if you kill an enemy unit with a shotgun, not gonna happen, not in this mission, because you're choosing pistols. Last but not least, there are explosive barrels in this mission. You can shoot at them and they can explode. Should they explode, everything within six inches of them will suffer D6. Strength four, AP nothing, damage one hits. Automatic hits. It's an explosion. And also any walls that are nearby that are uh, crumbly will be exploded as well. I shoot, they go boom. Quick shout out to the following terrain companies that you see on this battlefield. We have skirmish mats here for the battle mat down below. We have Hammer Forge Studios for these big crates. We have Bandua War Games for these massive fuel tanks. And then we have Games Workshop for all of these kill team terrain pieces. So we're going to begin now. Rob, you may move three squares, but I will say this. Right now you're in sneak mode and enemies do not know that you are here. So, uh, if, you do, if you shoot, you will alert them. So you can sneak attack them in close combat and not give away your position. What do you choose to do? I'm gonna sneak. Okay. Stealth mode's best. I like that. So you have enemies over here and over there. Which direction do you go? I'm going to actually go this way. There's my three spots. All right. Now. What we're gonna do is, you have infinite movement until you land within nine inches of an enemy. And then what you'll do is you'll roll to see if they notice you. If you're within line of sight of them. If not, you can charge them, no problem. For example, if you're right there, the enemy does not see you, but you can actually run and charge them. If you fail, then you're gonna to have to roll a dice and we'll roll off, and if I get higher, then I notice you, I hear something. If not, then you lucked out. You can try again. Charging? I'm charging. Okay, so you need nine inches. You don't make it, so we're both gonna roll off. Add one to your dice because you have the advantage of surprise. Yep. Okay. Five. Oh no. Oh, okay. yes. I do not notice you. Little does this ganger know John Wick is about to pounce. 
So you're moving out. Okay, oh, now, yeah. now within line of sight. Yeah. Out in the open now, you may charge me. I'm charging him. You need, I, I got a little bit of cover still, so. You need five inches, you get it easily. Yes. And you make it into base contact. So now normally you would make your attacks as per normal if you were playing regular 40K, but this is not regular 40K. This is custom campaign rule mission 40K. So we're gonna make a roll off. Whoever gets higher gets to roll to attack first. Here we go. I get a four. Oh, I get, get a two. two. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. This ganger's faster than you expected. Yep. I'm going to roll to attack you. I hit you on fours. One hit. Your toughness is four, so I wound you on a five. That is not a nope. wound. You get to hit me back. Your base three attacks, but you charge me, so you get plus one for that. Now, before you roll, John Wick has Kung Fu Fury, which means six is to hit in close combat, cause one mortal wound in addition to regular damage. So what that means is if you get a single six here to hit, this ganger automatically dies. So I'm getting six. two sixes. Okay. No sixes, no. but three hits. Yes. Because you needed fours to hit. Strength three, so fours to wound. No. Nothing. No wounds. He just getting warmed up. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's a little bit of a fight. Rob, you realize this is only one ganger out of all the enemies on the board. My fingers are starting to get warmed up. Now you may be wondering, hey, the lights came on. Yes, because we are now aware that John Wick is in the area and uh, the lights came on so we can see him because oh. he is Baba Yaga after all. Next round, we're gonna roll a die, see who goes first. I get a five, you get a four, I'm gonna go first again. Two attacks hitting you on fours, that's one hit, and wounding you on fives, no, no wounds. You luck out. This time you have three attacks because it's not the round that you charged me. So go ahead and roll. Fours to hit. That Nothing. Is no hits! Wow, we're back and forth like crazy. Dude, this is the first enemy. How's this gonna be? Warming up still. Okay. Next round. I get a one. Oh boy. Oh, this might be it. Oh, ah! just barely. Oh, Three attacks, hitting on fours. Oh, two sixes. Yes. That's two mortal wounds, which means automatically death. Boom, boom. Has one wound, therefore one XP for you. One experience. Because we are aware of you now, we're going to roll as an initiative, okay? So it's gonna be me and then you. Meaning all of the enemies on the table versus your one character. Let's roll the die, see who gets to activate first. Okay. Ooh, it's a tie. Let's re-roll that. Yep. Two and six. Six. So now they know where you are, therefore they're gonna make their way towards you and uh, you're gonna have to you know, strategically take them out because uh, eventually they're gonna gang up on you. Now, there is a crate there and you are within three inches of it. You can choose to open it up and see if there's ammo in there. I'm certainly doing that. I need it, especially when they're gonna start coming close to me. Now, before you open up that crate, do you wanna search this dead ganger to see if there's any ammo you could use? Yes, definitely. Roll a dine on a four plus, you find ammo. You do find yes, ammo. Yes, I do. So roll a dine on a D3. You find one, one ammo. One shot, which you know what? Every shot counts. That's right. Goes to 10. One more pew. No, it's pew pew. For the crate, you have some options. So for this, Rob, you found frag, crack, and plasma. Okay, so you have a plasma pistol, so this is important. For frag, roll a d3. Okay, so you got two, put two next to, crack, to frag. For crack, do the exact same thing. These are grenades, by the way, they're all grenades. So two crack grenades. And for plasma, do a d3 as well. So you found three. Nice. Plasma charges. Still your turn. That was just your movement phase. You have some options here. There is an explosive barrel on the other side of this wall. You can shoot it and trigger an explosion, should you choose. There is a group of gangers there. Or you can charge the gangers and fight them with your Kung Fu Fury. Or you can shoot them, then charge them. They're one unit, by the way. So they all attack as one group. What's your choice? I'm going to shoot the barrel. Ah, that's what I thought. So you're shooting your bolt pistol or your plasma pistol? 
Bolt pistol. Okay, because you have more rounds? Yes. Makes sense. You hit on a three plus. All right, give it to me. That's yes. it. I got it. The toughness of that barrel is toughness four. So you need to roll a four, and then you wound or essentially penetrate the barrel, therefore explode it. So roll a die, and on a four plus, that happens. All right. Five. And you make it. This barrel and this unit right there. And by the way, this wall comes out. Nice. Now roll a d6. This is how many hits that unit takes. Two. These are automatic hits. So roll two dice, and on threes, you wound them. That's two wounds. Nice. So they have a very light save, which is six. So let's see if any of them, nope. So two go down because of that. And two experience for you. Which brings me to three. Now you may charge. So roll two dice. And on a six, you engage them in combat. You do eight, corn wants it. Oh boy. John Wick is just hustling over, that's it. John Wick's at his spot. So you attacks first out of this group. I get a two, and John Wick gets a five. All the time. That's four dice now because you uh, attacked. You're like attacking me, so uh, uh, four is to hit. Yep. That's only one hit. Ooh. However, it's a mortal wound in addition to regular damage. So you still get to roll to wound. In this case, you would roll a four to wound. All right. I that, got it. That is a wound. So one dies automatically. And let's see if I make this save on a six plus. I no. don't. You just took out two. <laughs> two broken necks. Hey, John. Are you working? Um, it, it's a long story. Two more XP. Going to five. five. So you actually are at level two now. So go ahead and erase that one, put a two there. And by going to level two, you get to add a special ability to yourself. Oh boy, can't wait. Rolling 2d6 to see which one you got. Come on. Eight. Eight. Double tap. For each hit roll of four plus during the shooting phase, Keon immediately makes another attack with the same weapon. Thank you, David Haynes, for that double tap rule. Double tap, very nice. Sounds like zombie land. A little bit. So that's pretty cool. So with your pistol, if you get a four plus to hit with it, which is a good chance you will, you can actually make another attack with it. And with your plasma pistol, it's a special plasma pistol, meaning that it's plasma two. So that means you could potentially fire four times if you wish. So that was your turn, Rob. So now it's gonna go over to my turn and we're just going to alternate back and forth. Unless it's close combat, then we see who actually hits each other first. But for movement and so forth, we are going to do it this way. So I'm gonna move towards you. And these gangers over here are also going to move in this direction. We got a big brute there. Uh, I'm taking them down, no problem. They will advance an inch, so they're just gonna go a little bit closer. They have a considerable amount of plasma shots. They're gonna fire at you. This is bad. I know. <laughs> okay, let's see what they hit you on. They hit you on fives, so that's two hits. Now your toughness is four, therefore they wound you on threes. And Ooh. that's two wounds. You're probably thinking at home, hey, that's AP3 on that plasma. That's gonna go right through his armor. However, this is John Wick. He has that special suit that just absorbs the bullets and plasma shots. We're extrapolating this for the 41st millennium. Therefore, that's gonna be a four plus invulnerable save against this weapon. So roll two dice, and on four pluses you save them. Look you at that. You saved them both. Some John Wick. And you got lucky though, I must say, because you only have three wounds. They're gonna charge you. And they get Oh you. no. That's three enemies against Mr. John Wick here. One of them with a combat knife. That just means he gets an extra attack. Rolling to see who gets to attack first. This is important. Three, four. four. Ooh, okay, that's lucky. So you get three attacks there. You get an extra attack when you charge. But if you're the one being charged, you don't get an extra attack. Three dice. Oh, oh. okay, one dies automatically. Yep. So you got uh, two hits there. And to wound, 
this is going to be forced wound. One wound. I'll roll a save. And on a six, I save it. I don't. You nope. took out two. Nice. Now the one with the combat knife is left over. But first, we've got to add your XP here. You go up to seven. One attack plus the knife plus I charged you. So three attacks against you. Uh oh. <laughs> so that four is a one hit, and I wound you on a five. And that does wound you. Okay, you're gonna roll your save. A yep. four plus. Four plus, coming up with a five. Oh, no. that wounds you. So your wounds go down by one. And my base is three. Yeah, so you just put it up there. All right. We roll again. All right, two and a four. four. So you hit me first with your three attacks. Get a single six and you take him out automatically. I don't like that combat knife. I'm getting a six, take him out. Oop. XP goes up to eight. I'm getting up there. So that was my turn, now it's your turn. You got a lot of bodies around you. Uh, you can search some of them. You don't have time to search all of them because you do have imminent threats that are coming your way. So do you want to search some of these for your movement or do you want to move towards these guys for your movement? I'm gonna search first for my movement. I think it's better to see if I can find any more ammunition, especially when there's more, I don't know how many enemies are on the board or what their wounds are, so. That's fair. All right, roll a D3 and that's how many enemies you get to search. All right, one. one enemy, that's fine. So roll a die, and on a four plus, you find something on this enemy, yes. you do. So roll a d3, and that's how many shots. One. One shot again. Yep. One's better than nothing. That's right. So your pistol shots go back up to 10. As you search them, I will take them off the board. So John's over there, and right here, there is that barrel. I want to try to hit the barrel and take the whole crew out. So roll one die, and on a three plus, you get it. However, on a four, you can choose to shoot again. Yes. I got a six! Okay, are you gonna shoot again? Yes. Okay, so roll another die. All right, that's two hits. Nice. So roll these dice on fours, you penetrate the barrel and explode it. Possibly. Uh, yes, one. Okay, that goes through. So this barrel in the wall goes And this unit obviously is right there. So roll a d6, that's how many hits that unit takes. Two auto hits, roll this and on fours, one. that's one wound. So this is your unit that you are hurting. So I'm gonna see if I can do something here. Um, I'm gonna roll a save. I don't make it, one of these dies. XP goes up to nine. Sweet. Just in case you're curious. The next level is at 15 XP. It's not that far behind. It's really not. Just so anyone is curious here, uh, there is a stratagem that is available to you, Rob. The one, so it says once per game during the command phase, Keanu may enter the state of the one until your next command phase. Treat Keanu as having ballistic skill two plus and ignore all damage done to Keanu. Thank you, Ryan Turton, for submitting this rule. That's pretty sweet. Well, that was a bit of devastation. Uh, you're too far away to charge me. Uh, actually, yes, you are, because the barrel was within 12, but those guys were outside of 12. So now I'm going to move towards you, see how you like it. This ganger has a hand flamer. Now this is dangerous, okay, because this is get you. So it's gonna be shot at you now. D6 shots, <gasps> four. Ooh. These are auto hitting, Rob. Auto hitting? Auto hitting, but they wound you on fives. Okay, so that's one wound, four plus save. And you save oh, it. Oh yeah. Because John Wick is tough. This ganger brute there is gonna shoot a shotgun at you. Not quite half range. Hits once and wounds you on a five. That's a wound. So one dice on a four plus, you save it. And it's, n oh, you got lucky once again. He's on fire. Well, you know, the flamer did nothing, so can yes, you say- not literally, okay. He's at the top of his game right now. I, I thank you. You're not wrong, Rob. You're very correct. Yes, and if he got caught on fire, then he would be on fire, but he's just on fire, so he's hot, and he's like, ripping down everybody! <laughs> By the way, I have to say, like, this is like, you know, we're grown men, and like, we're, but it doesn't matter, because we're playing a game, and we're boys, ultimately, so that's yes. all that matters. That's right. Now it's time to charge you, Rob. Uh, now, I should say this. 
You do have the option to overwatch me. However, you hit me on sixes. So you can use, still use your ammo when you do that, by the way. I don't want, no, I'm not gonna overwatch you. Not gonna waste it, okay. No. So let's see if I get into range. I fail. Look at that. Looks like I'm a little slow to get you. Goes back to you. What, what would you like to do? Well, I don't want to, I'm just gonna shoot him. Okay, yeah. you're not gonna move closer? Actually, no, no, I'm saying I'm letting them come to me. Oh, because they could possibly have another round of shooting at you. But that's your choice. You're giving me too many options. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, do you know what? No, I'm saying where I am. I'm gonna stick to my guns, literally. <laughs> Uh, I love the old I'm man. just gonna pew pew. pew okay, pew. all right, bathroom's that way, but let's do it. What, what's your plan? I am going to move up, and I'm going to throw a grenade into them, so I don't want to get too far. All right, so you're within six. Which one? Throw in a frag or crack? Frag. Frag, okay, so D6, let's see how many uh, shots you get here. Four. Four. Hitting on three. Let's do it. Ah, <laughs> uh, three hits. That is three hits. So that brute there is uh, toughness better than the other skinny ganger. Therefore, we're going majority toughness. So to wound me, you're gonna need fives. Fives, no problem. All right, let's see. Fives! Oh, one wound. One. And I'm going to throw this on the brute. Saved. Really? Yeah. Oh. Are you charging? <laughs> I, I kind of screwed up my thing there. Uh, no, I'm not going to charge. What? No. Okay. All right. I'm okay with this. However, there might be people at home yelling at the screen. Just saying. Do you hear them? <laughs> I'll charge. <laughs> I was thinking on going around, but obviously, yes, it is better to charge because shooting, they'll get a shoot and then they'll get to charge on That's their right. turn. They'll get a free shot. All right. So just don't get snake eyes. Don't say that. Oh, oh, no. Hey, you know, you're gonna waste your good rolls now. It's overkill. You only needed three, but that's fine. So go ahead and move them in. Oh yeah, they're right in. Say goodbye. You took my, my brother's dog. You took my cat. These are mush. You're John Wick. You kill with pencil. So you have four attacks here. You hit on fours. One hit, Ooh. okay, and you're going to wound here on fives. Fives? That's no. A, that would have been a fail regardless. Yep. Now, to attack you back, I actually have rolled these separate because they have different stats. For the skinny ganger, here's the one attack that misses. For the brute, there's two attacks. That's one hit, and let's see if I wound you. Your toughness four? That, oh no. That's a wound. So you need a four plus to see if this goes through. Do it, do it, do it, do it! Oh, no, you got I get another wound. He's gone down to one now. Poor John. Come on, Johnny, you can do this. Next round. Here we go. Who attacks first? Three. Three and six. A six. Oh, you got lucky. All right, grab your three dice and hit me on fours and hope for sixes. One um, six. One six. One six. So that auto kills somebody. Yep. All right. Now roll to see if you wound. No. That does not wound. Roll a die, Rob. On a four plus, it's the brute. Oh, give me a five. Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. So you auto kill the brute. 10 XP. 10 it is. Now for this ganger to attack you back. And that is a miss. Ha. Next round. Getting a three. Three and a one, uh-oh. Right. Let's see if I hit you. This time I do. Let's see if I wound you. <gasps> That's a wound. <laughs> I'm just glad that you don't have that ability for the six, it's an auto kill, cause that, yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Four plus. Oh, five, oh, yes! <laughs> you're so lucky. <laughs> All right, three dice, attack me back. <laughs> you're so lucky. Oh, you, that's it, you're done. And there's the six. The six. Yeah. How's your heart, Rob? <laughs> oh, it, it just expanded to let more joy in. Uh-huh. Get the camera in my face. Up to 11. <laughs> just redrew it. And before we forget, let's update the frag count. 
So you've taken out all these gangers in this small area. Uh, do you want to loot some bodies? You don't have any uh, imminent threats right now. I certainly want to see if I can find some more uh, ammo to help me increase it. So, because I think I got, I've got a funny feeling that something big is coming my way. Mm. So just to make this a little easier for you, you have four gangers here with plasma weapons. So roll four dice, and on each four plus, you get to roll to see how many extra plasma charges you get. That would be so sweet. So one extra. One extra plasma charge. No, no, you get to see how many extra. Oh, yes. So roll a d3 right. and see how many extra here. Three. Nice. Okay, so it worked out pretty well. Three to six. That's not bad. And then you got one ganger there with a couple pistols. Roll two dice on an each four plus the same thing, but for pistols, so you get one. So roll a d3. You get two pistol shots this time. That's 12 pew pews. It's, I'm really glad that I'm getting up there with the pew pews because I need a lot of pew pews to stop the other guys from going pew pew at me. By the way, just so you know, these uh, ammo, the ammo here, it's gonna spill over into the next game. Yeah. Oh, so. It doesn't reset. Okay. So, yeah, so that, that's why, because it's John Wick. That's realistic. good. Yes, you can keep racking it up. Now this one is kind of, uh, you know, ammo heavy, where you get a good amount of that, but there's going to be situations in the future where it's not going to be so plentiful. This is just to show you the mechanics of it. All right, Rob. So you are out of line of sight of that ganger that has a shotgun to Onyx's head, which means you're able to sneak around and search these crates to see if there's any medical supplies. Now he knows you're here, but he can't see you because his line of sight is blocked. So you can move out there, right in front, and you can search that. Roll a dice, and on a six, you find something. You don't. Nope. You can choose to search over here. However, should you do that, there's a chance that Ganger's gonna see you. And if you do that, then he gets a chance at shooting at you. At or, me? Or alerting more enemies. So. No, no, I don't want to chance it because I don't want Onyx to uh, be a statistic. Now you can make your way back around here and search this and not have to make a check to see if he sees you. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. As search. long as you go here, you can search through the windows. So roll a dice and on a six, you find something. Give me a six. Nope. No. You can search that pile there. Now if you do that, you're gonna go over here and there is a chance he'll be able to see you. Okay. I have to take the chance because I need to get closer to my puppy. Okay. So for this, Rob, we're gonna make a strength check, okay? We're gonna equate this to your stealth ability. So to make a strength check, you roll a dice, and you need to get three or lower to be successful. So basically, it's a 50-50 chance. I need a one. You do, you really do need a one. <laughs> okay, so he doesn't see you. Now roll another die, and on a six, you find something. I need a six. Oh, you oh, find yeah. something, you are so lucky. You happen to find a med kit. So let's see how many wounds, however, uh, how many wounds are healed, okay? So roll a dice, and on a one, two, or three, you heal one. On a four, five, six, you heal two. I'm getting four right here. It's gonna be a one. It's a five. It's a five, okay, so you heal two. Brings me back to my base yeah. score of three. Back up to three. All right, Rob, what's your plan? Originally, there's a nice crate here that's calling my name, but if I do that, he can probably take another pot shot at me. Even here, too, as well, but if I go there to there, it might be two pot shots, so I want to go over this way. Okay, so you're going to go forward. All right, so make a stealth check again. One, two, or three. All right, so he sees you. Ugh. So now roll a die to determine the initiative. Okay. All right. Four, Four and, and a one. one. So he's going to go yep. first. Darn it! It's okay, do you know why? Why? I have a plan. Well, Wick has a plan. Yes. And his plan is he wants to get close enough so we can just kind of keep cover and just keep shooting. But I have to worry about Onyx because he may turn his sights at Onyx. Not Wick, but the brute. Mm -hmm. Over here now, we see 
You can attempt to call your dog and your dog will go to you. Okay, should you be successful, your dog will run towards you. Should that happen, there's a chance that he will shoot the dog. I want to get closer. You want to get closer? Yeah, I want to get closer. Okay. Down on the far side, you notice a couple armored dudes walking into this area. Which way do you want to go? Well, what I want to do is I'm going to make my way this way. Now, I know I was going to go, but I have another plan that may work if them armored guards come a little closer. Okay, so you're going to go over there? Yep, certainly just... Roll a D3. So this is what's going to happen. On a one, ballistic shots. On a two, it's going to be plasma shots. And on a, okay, I see what you're doing. On a three, it'll be grenades. Okay. Here it goes. Okay, so you two. find ballistic shots. Roll D6. Two. That's how many more pistol shots you get. Nice. So 12 to 14 pew pew. Oh boy, there's gonna be a lot of pew 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 automatic soon. That's it for your turn. I'm going to advance these guys. So they're gonna move their distance and then an additional. And he's gonna move forward and advance down another four. So he's just gonna hop down there. However, he's gonna keep an eye on Onyx just so Onyx doesn't try to run away. And upon closer inspection, you see that Onyx is chained, so he can't actually run away. So you do have to go there and rescue him. I was lucky not to call him. And when I say chained, the brute chained him before he jumped down. <laughs> I figured I'd add that little side note, you know, just as a little side, just uh, to, to, for clarification. Well, at least he isn't chained to the brute no. and have to follow the brute. No. Your turn, Rob. Okay, well, I want to advance just to get a little bit more cover here and a better shot at him. So when you say advance, you mean move? Move, yes, sorry. Okay. All right, so you're gonna shoot him? Yep. Plasma or pistol? Plasma. All right, so that's two shots with that, hitting on threes. That's, oh, one hit. Well, it's one hit. Roll a dice and on a three you wound him. Oh, that's no wound. What? Ah. Down to four plasma shots. Uh, I tried, I'll try again. Do you wish to charge him? Yes. Okay, so he's gonna try to overwatch you with a shotgun. He hits you on sixes. That's nope. No hits, so you may charge, roll two dice, and you need a nine. Oh, that's seven. That's seven, okay, you don't quite make it. Now it is Brute's turn, and these dudes over here. So they're gonna move up and they are going to advance. Another one. Bip, bip. The Bruce's gonna fire his shotgun at you. He's within half range, and he missed his bow. Oh. But he is gonna charge you. Five, and? Oh, I think he, that looks like he made it. And he makes it. Yes. Roll a die, you get a, you just dropped that, you didn't actually roll it? Did you roll that six? No, I got it in my hand, I oh, didn't okay. roll yet. I mean, yeah, I rolled this thing. <laughs> and it's four. Okay, so you get to attack me first. So three dice, and you hit me on fours. And you Nothing. And with my two attacks, I hit you once, and I'm gonna wound you. That's a wound. I roll a dice on a four plus, you ignore this. That's no, a wound. that's a wound. So now I'm down to two. Back down to two. These brutes are good at wounding Wick. I think that might be his Wickness. Do you know what the sound of this is? <laughs> I got my hat in the way. It, it, it didn't dad work. Dad jokes. Out. It's dad jokes. Uh, next round. Yep. So, let's see who gets to attack first. Four. Four. And, and six. six. All right, you get another chance. Three. Three dice going at him. That's Hit. it. Goodbye. Three. Hitting on fours. There's your six. So you take him out. Yep. <laughs> XP goes to 12. Two. So that happened on your turn. So let's go on my turn. 
Let's go there and I'm gonna take some shots at you. Now, you are in cover there. So you have a four plus and vulnerable save, plus you have a four plus regular save, which means that if you are in cover, you receive the benefit of cover against ballistic shots, whatever, right? Meaning you'll have a three plus cover save. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna fire at you here. This is going to be some uh, two hits, and then I'm gonna be wounding you on nothing. Nope, your toughness four, that wounds you once. So you do have a three plus cover save. Yes. And, and I didn't do it. Didn't help. <laughs> That's so funny, Dave. <laughs> I'm the only one wound again. <laughs> it is your turn now. What do you do? I am going to stay where I'm gonna shoot at that barrel. <laughs> now, you can actually fire both of your pistols at it if you wish. You got two pistols, you can shoot them both. I am shooting them both at the barrel. All right. Before you do that, erase your one command point there and uh, put two. I leveled up. You did. That's yes. right, so I get two command points. Instead of shooting at the barrel, because I thought it would have been better, but I'm gonna supercharge my plasma, because I totally forgot about that. Use my command point to for the one. Which will allow you to hit on two plus, and then any damage coming your way won't actually do anything. So it brings me back down to one command point. Here goes, two dice. So that's two hits. Yes. Yeah, now that's a four plus. So that means you can roll an additional hit if you wish. Definitely. Okay, so roll another dice. Oh! And that does miss. Now yes. that is a one as well. I know. Now unfortunately, you suffer a wound from that. Yes, and you know what happens there? I do know what happens there. John Wick, he got greedy. So let's resolve this first. You got two hits. You wound on twos because you supercharged, so go ahead. Oh. That's two yes. wounds. That goes directly through their armor. That kills them both. Bringing you to 14 XP. I love the way you, you write your fours. It messes with my brain every time. <laughs> you did use three plasma shots. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And put your wounds to zero. I don't like that. John Wick, like, come on. So, you actually killed all of the enemies on the board. Uh, you did get reduced to zero wounds. So we're actually going to resolve this chart right now. So roll 2d6 and see what happens. You get a seven. Crippled, permanent, minus one movement. Ooh. So your movement is now five inches. You don't have the spring in the step anymore. So by the way, that's what happens when you're reduced to zero wounds. You just continuously get more damaged and more damaged. Now because you eliminated all of the enemies, you were successful in actually taking out the threat. And so we're gonna count this as a bear just squeaking by success. <laughs> had you not taken out the enemies, then you would have failed the mission. So you just barely did it. Otherwise, that death chart would have been rolled after the conclusion of the mission. But that happened kind of simultaneously. Yeah. So you lucked out there. So you saved your dog. You're Onyx got to carry me to the hotel to get patched up. That's right. So you're going to roll a d6. This is how many XP you add. Oh, yes. Couldn't ask for any better. So 14 goes to 20. And since you surpassed 15, that levels you up to level three. So you might as well do that, plus your command points, put it at three, because we're at the end of the mission now. And roll to see your upgrade. You already got an eight, so just re-roll it if you get another eight. <laughs> of course. But you know what, he's upgrading really good right now. Six. Six. A scanner darkly. Once per game, when Keanu Reeves is targeted by an attack, you may swap the positions of Keanu Reeves and another hero you control Treat the other hero as targeted by this attack. Thank you, Breck and Chase Hip. That's pretty cool. And a scanner darkly. Uh, I gotta fix this. Ah, uh, scanner D. That's fine. Okay. And stay tuned, folks, for our next mission, which Rob will be using Bruce Willis in a very classic specialized mission where he needs to rescue some hostages in this super dangerous, towering 
construction site. I was going to say uh, tower of, uh, you know, hostage taking tower. Where Nakatomi, Nakatomi Tower? That's it. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. And by the way, props to you, Rob, for getting all dressed up. yippee ki This next mission will be in the Mini Wargaming Vault, so be sure to click on that link below and uh, watch the mission number two. If you're not a Vault member, we invite you to sign up for a seven-day free trial to the Vault so that you can see this mission as well as all of the other games that are associated with the Expendable Season 2 campaign. Thank you very much, guys, and see you in there.